Hey guys, here is another video virtual tour. This is going to be a short one. This is the Lone Mountain Beltway Regional Detention Basin. This is where all the water that uh, rains down up above us comes down and can be collected and held while it drains down so that we don't have as many flash floods further uh, down into the valley where people live. So let's take a closer look at this basin and what it can do. All right, we are on the south end of the basin looking north. A nice sign here. You can notice all along the outside there are chains and fences. That's to keep people out because during a flash flood it can get pretty hairy down in there. There can be a lot of water built up in that basin. So you definitely don't want to go in there. Don't cross the fence. Don't cross the chain. And let's go a little further down and take a closer look at how the basin works. And as we're walking along here, we don't have a lot of really high fences going along the edge of this basin, at least not here on the south side. I think that they just assume that people aren't going to want to go in. Although I do occasionally see dirt bikers going down in there. It's a terrible idea. It's not what it was designed for, but people do what they do. So as you can tell, this is a big basin. This isn't like the small little basin over by Trigono Hills Park down the road. This is a large basin that covers a large amount of area. And here we are on the south side looking north. Let's go back around to the east side and look at it from that direction so we can see the inlets and the outlets. All right, as you can see, there is an inlet on the far north side and then another one on the west side. Coming around, you can see it's pretty deep. It can definitely hold a lot of water. And going down here to the south side, you can see the outlet. All right. So this is what we call a regional detention basin. It can hold a lot of water. And that's so that downstream across the valley here, that water doesn't pile up in places where we don't want it to. Instead, it can sit here in this detention basin until it all drains out through the flood channel down into Las Vegas Wash and finally into Lake Mead and the Colorado River drainage. So here we have one warning sign warning people not to go into the detention basin. No trespassing, first city ordinance. So don't go into flood channels. Don't go into detention basins. They are there to hold large amounts of water that pile up in a very quick amount of time during monsoon season. Don't disregard the trespassing signs. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna go take a look at one more feature, uh, which is the actual flood channel, which is a little bit closer to where people live up here on the far west end of Lone Mountain Road. And as you'll see, the closer we get to where people live, the more security measures they implement to make sure people actually stay out of the detention basin and the flood channels. So one question you might ask yourself and should ask yourself is, how does the water get into the detention basin? So we've seen the inlet, but how does water get through to the inlet so that it can settle down in the basement. And here we are at a flood channel and let's walk over to it. All right, see that big black fence over there? That's where we're heading. And as you can see, 
It's a channel lined on three sides. Well, <laughs> open on the top, but lined all around by concrete. And as you can see, they put that fencing there because they're apartment buildings right here. There's big subdivision up back there. And now that we're closer to where people actually live and spend a lot of time, we want to make sure we keep people out of this detention basin and flood channel system. So here's the channel. As you can see, you've got an inlet and it's pretty high. Those walls go down there pretty far, right? And that's because there's a lot of water that can run off up in this whole area. And if you were to build a shallow flood channel, the water would just rush out and then come up over the sides and into the road and flood people's houses. We don't want that to happen. So you want to build the channel so it's big enough to handle the most water the monsoon season can send us. And so it's pretty deep. As you can see, the water goes down and then underground and the flood channel runs down, down underground until it finally links up with other flood channels and eventually uh, dumps out into the regional detention basin. Then again, here's a view from the other side of the channel. You can really see how big this is designed, right? This large volume of water can come passing through here. So whoever designed this really needed to think about, well, just how much runoff could we be getting up here in this area, right? What kind of volumes are we going to need to design for? And just consider, this is a job that someone has. This is a job you could have, right? They didn't just design this in a day. They spent a lot of time and effort sitting down calculating just how big these flood channels have to be. That's the job of a civil engineer. It's a great job to have. Strongly encourage you to consider it as you're looking at your career options. It does require a good understanding of math and science, but it's also a job that has a lot of job security. It's a job you could raise your family on. Civil engineers make about $60,000 a year starting out and they go up from there. So consider it. So there you have it. That is a regional detention basin. This is for flood water control and mitigation. So when we get the monsoon season starting in July and running through September, this is one of the places where water can pile up safely so that it doesn't flood us uh, during monsoon season.